What's happening guys, it's Brad, and welcome to another episode on the Graph to a Draft series where today you will see on the screen we have a very healthy balance of 741,000. We will be trying to get that to around about 756 or 757 because we have got the 700 coins there after we have done our trading today. Now what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing some sniping today on the 85 and 86 rated players, mainly because currently as you will see in the squad building challenges, we have the new um, team of the week, uh, or sorry, team of the season so far, deluxe guaranteed upgrade. So this is the one where you get any team of the season from the top five leagues in this pack. And it does require, as we go into the SBC, an 86 rated team with a team of the season, team of the week, or team of the week moments card. So now with this, obviously this does mean with it being an 86, that there will be a lot of 85s and 86s needed to in order to complete this. So what we will be doing today is we'll be looking at some of those. So without any further delay, the first one that I'm gonna be looking at, that will probably be one that will be fairly popular and fairly low priced, is gonna be Berkey. He's an 85 rated card. And I imagine he's around about the 8,000 coins mark. Probably not even that high. So he is. He looks like he's actually a little bit more than I thought. Okay, so there we go. That was a bit of a glitch out there. Because that one was showing that that was on for um, over a few minutes. There we go. So 9,400 he is going at. So with that being said, obviously we're looking at sort of 470 coins after tax on this one. So we're going to want to get this for at least 8, 7 or less to actually make it a little bit worth our while. So we're going to go and see if we can pick ourselves up a few Berkeys. Just to let you go again because I always do like to tell you this because there may well be some struggles with getting some cards. It is currently 11.43 in the morning on Wednesday. So... Um, yeah, obviously, unless the people are deciding to open up the special packs that they've got in the stores or those are playing drafts that are getting packs opened, are planning on opening them now, there is a likelihood that we will struggle to see any cards. But we will go on these and like I say, after we've got a few, I'll show you them on the transfer market and then we'll move on to the next card. Okay, you'll see that we've just had to load back in on this screen now because unfortunately we were kicked out. But we did manage to pick up two Berkeys who will sell at 9300 because we know that 94 was the lowest by now there. So as soon as someone picks them up for the SBCs, it's quite a good card to pick up because Hummels is a tots. So he could be used for that SBC. Anyone that's got the Hummels, then they can get a nice strong link to Berkey and a Kanji. That pretty much gives them the chemistry that they're probably going to need to do that SBC with. The other goalkeeper that we will look at who is 85 rated as well and one of my favourite goalkeepers in the game because I pack him more times than anyone else is Onana. Now obviously it should be that uh, all his 82s are gone from the market. We will just double check that uh, there is one on there actually. So as it currently stands, Onana's on the market for around about 8,000 coins. However, there are a few 82s slipping through the net there. So for that reason, it may well be a little bit dodgy to try and uh, to try and snipe this card. There's quite a few of the 82s. So actually, what we're going to do, go and give it a miss. Move on to our next position. So our next position, where we have it as an 85 at the left back position, we are going to go for Marcelo. I think he's a little bit more pricey. I think he's around about 15k. He's even higher than that. Wow, this card is expensive. Uh, obviously, when I say it's about 15k, that's me referring to the prices on the Xbox. Uh, it looks like I'm a little bit out. So he's going for about 20k on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and try and see if we can get him uh, for 19k or less. Um, actually, we'll drop that down to 18,750. That way we guarantee a 250 coin profit, even if we sell him at 20k. And uh, we'll come back when we get some Marcellos. Okay, so we've been going on Marcelo for a little while and uh, we've only had one card come up. I thought I actually got it, but for some reason it didn't register the mechanics and we didn't get the card. So what we're going to do is going to move on to some of the centre-backs now. So the first one I'm going to go and look at is Bonucci, uh, a fairly common one that is in SBCs, not good as a player in the game, but definitely would be used as an SBC card. Just going to check and see what his price is. So there's one there at 21, when we've searched at 21 and a half, and several there at 22,000. So... 21 and a half does look to be what he's going to be going for. After tax, 
we're talking there's about 1,100 coins. So we're going to look and try and get that card for around about 20k. We'll go for, if it's going to sell dead on for 21,750, we'll go for 20k. So that should give us a 500k coin profit. And uh, we'll see if any come up. Okay, so we've gone on Bonucci for a little while. We have managed to get ourselves one, which I think is probably already sold. Yep. So we got that one at 20,000, sold it at 21,750. So that's about 600 coins after tax. One of our Berkeys is sold, the other one probably won't take too long to sell. We're now going to go to our next centre back. So what I'm looking at is those that come out fairly often and also those that would be likely to be used in the SBCs. Now, unfortunately, for this, there's not a lot that do come out uh, around the 86 and 85 that are as prominent as Bonucci. But what we're going to do is going to go and look at Nicolas Sule who I believe goes for around about 16 to 17,000 coins. So we're just going to have a look at the 17,250. Yeah, so there's one on there for that that hasn't gone yet. But it, he has now by the looks of it. So 17,250, you're looking at that being around about 900 coins after tax. So we're going to try and get it for 16,250. And anything less than that obviously is a profit. And what an incredible snipe that is. We go and get a Sula for 12 and a half thousand coins. So this card, like we showed on the screen earlier, goes for around about 17,000. So that is a massive 4,000 coin less snipe. So we're going to stick it up at 17. That's a brilliant snipe for us. And actually, he was the only one that we've seen come up in the time that we have been sniping him. So we're going to move on to the next one. But I'm just going to say he is a good one to snipe because uh, when it comes to chemistry, him, Boateng, Kimmich, they're all kind of good ones to give good strong links around there. And obviously, Manuel Neuer is fairly well priced as well. So it gives you a good rating at the back there. Uh, but we're going to go on our last centre back. And we're going to look at Skriniar. Another 86. He is around about the 18,000 to 19,000 mark. So it looks like he's gone a little bit up. He's 19,750 for uh, some that have been on there a little while. So again, it's going to be 1,000 coins less that I need to get him at. So probably going to go for the 18 and a half, and then I would sell him on for 19 and a half just to guarantee a sell. That would give us not much of a profit if we did get one at 18 and a half. It would probably only give us around about a 200 coin. Uh, profit but obviously if we do pick one up at 18 then that gives us about a 700 coin profit which is a much more reasonable snipe well nothing coming up for Skriniar and I've realized that I have overlooked a player who actually I have mentioned in previous episodes and that is someone who does come out commonly in packs and that is Marquinhos now the way I'm going to search for Marquinhos is a little bit different to these I'm not going to search him by his player name directly because as we do know he has a Brazilian counterpart in Thiago Silva so what we go and do is we set it to centre backs and Brazilian and PSG and you'll see that the only ones that do play for them are Thiago Silva and Marquinhos. Now Marquinhos' prize looks to be around about 25,000. As we just missed out on that and that is actually a good snipe at 22k because um, I believe he is 25,000. Yep, so 25 looks to be dead on for both of these cards. So Thiago Silva is the one coming up at 25k, but as you'll see, Marquinhos is also there at 25k. If we search for 24,750, nothing comes up. So we're going to be able to get both of these in one snipe here. Obviously, this is only an 85 to 86 snipe, but if I pick up the Thiago Silva, that's just a bonus. They're both going for 25k anyway, so it makes no difference. So what we're going to look at here, this one will be around about 1,250 coins after tax. So we do need to be getting this for just less than 23k. So I'm going to go at the 22.5 mark, which is what we actually did see that Marquinhos up for when we just missed it as we loaded in to see what price they were. So we'll go at 22.5k, see if we can pick up either a Marquinhos or a Thiago Silva on this. And like I say, we know that they go for a sell at 24,750 guaranteed. There we go, we get a Thiago Silva there at 23k. We've upped the price a little bit um, just because nothing was coming up at all at that. So at 24,750 after tax, we are only looking at about 400 to 500 coins, but it's still a profit. We'll go a little bit more, see if we can pick ourselves up one more. And then we're going to move on to the right backs. 
Okay, so we did only get the one Tiago Silva from that. But as you will see on there, everything that we did put up on the market has sold. Our fantastic snipe on the Sula has obviously given us a 4K profit. It means we're only 9K away now from being able to start our draft. Okay, so we are now going on to the right backs. And probably the most overpriced right back in the game is going to be Joshua Kimmich. Now, he's obviously 86 rated, but he also links to a Boateng. Uh, Sula and Nabry who are all 84 or 85 rated so they're good chemistry links when you need a high chemistry link for the SBC. Now what we're going to do is going to go and set his price and you'll be very surprised or not to know that he is around about 34,000 coins. There you go 33 and a half there appears to be one on there maybe. One on there at the moment at 33 and a half. Now with this, that means it's about 17, uh, 1,700 coins after tax. So we need to get this for two grand less. So we're going to need to get this for 31,750 or less. Uh, what I'm hoping with this card is that people don't know that his price is so high and maybe have in mind that at one point he was around about 24, 25K and list him up for that. Obviously that is what we would like in an ideal world. Um, but we do know that uh, people tend to be pretty switched on to the market these days and like to save on their coins. So we'll go on to Joshua Kimmich for a little while and then we'll move on to our other right back that we're going to snipe to trade on. Okay, so going on Joshua Kimmich for a little while, nothing came up. So we are going to move on to our next player and our final right back. And that is another one with some good links in Danny Carvajal. Again, probably a little bit overpriced, but is purely because he's a home nation of his league so being Spanish and from La Liga he will link to most players in that league and obviously he is a Real Madrid player he is still around about the 29,000 mark so you see there's one on there at 29,250 that'll probably go that has gone already 29,500 is gone and there's a few on there at 29,750 so we know it's definitely going at 29,500 which means we'd need to get it for 27,750 or less in order to make a profit Let's go and see if we can pick up a Carvajal. So again, been going on for Danny Carvajal for quite a little while and uh, nothing has popped up at all, not even a single card that I've missed. So we are probably going to move on to our midfielders. Just going to go for a couple more searches. And yeah, I think we will call it there. So one of our first uh, searches we're going to do, so we're going to look at the 85s first and one fairly common player that also links to other leagues because of his nation is Rodri being 85 he's around about 11k so it looks like he's actually just a little bit cheaper now these days 10,750 he will definitely go at so we know that around about 1,000 coins less we need to get that card out so we're going to go for 10 9,600 see if we can pick ourselves up a Rodri and we will put him up for 10,750 Okay, so nothing came up there for Rodri, so we're going to move on to another Premier League player in Fabinho. Now, I noticed the other day on the Xbox, I was quite surprised that this guy was down to 7k, but I think with this SPC, he probably has gone up a little bit. Uh, so we're going to have a look here. It says um, on Footbin, and like I say always, there are other platforms to use to check your prices. Um, he's around about 11k. I'll just check to see if there is any at 10,750. So done at 10750 again. So we're looking around the same price. We want to get him for about 9600 So once I get the search function right, we will go and see if we can pick up Fabinho's for 9600 to sell at 10750 coins. Okay, so very surprisingly for me, um, Fabinho didn't come up in the searches at all. So we're going to move on to our next player. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search on the next player. And I'm going to see if there's a way to be able to try and get two players in one. Although I've got a feeling that there is another player that fits this criteria. And that is the Atletico Madrid midfielders in Koke and Saul. Now I've got a feeling there are more than just these guys. Yeah, so we have a... Oh, he's a bronze. So let's go and put gold in. So yeah, Vitolo and Marcus Lorente. So they're going to unfortunately stop us from being able to get Saul and Koke. I think. Now what we'll do is we'll put in a price of around 17750 and we can see that Saul and Koke still come up for that. 
and these guys will be maximum buy now of 10,000 coins. So when I put this in now, this should only bring up Saul and Koke, which is fine, that's what we want. It does mean, however, that we're not going to get amazing snipes on this, because they appear to be around about uh, yeah, 14,000 coins, so... Yeah, I think if we drop it down to the 13,750, there's one on the market. Okay, so we can have a little go. We'll try and get this card for around 12,750. But basically, that, that card has got to be listed up within that criteria of 12,750 and 10,250 in order for us to be able to find these two players. But it's no different in a way than when we are sniping for a player and trying to get it a little bit undercut. It just means that, say for instance, someone was just a list of Koke up for 1200 coins instead of 12,000 coins we would miss out on that snipe um, but you know we'll try and see if we can get any uh, Saul or Koke under this little filter and uh, if not we'll move on to the next player okay so nothing coming up for there I did think that was a bit of a long shot given the um, the way we had to set up the criteria for that snipe gonna go for our last 85 rated midfielder who does pop up a little bit and that is going to be Gomez. Now, obviously, he's got a few strong links. One of them we will be looking at in Higuain. And I think he is a reasonably priced around about 10k. Yeah, it's a dead on 10k. So 500 coins after tax. We're going to try and see if we can snipe him for about 9,200 or under. That way, we guarantee ourselves about a 300 coin profit when selling him at 10k. And then after this one, we will move on to the 86s. Okay, so nothing coming up for Alejandro Gomez. So what we're going to do is going to move on to 86 midfielders. Now, there are six of these. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to show you in the transfer market afterwards if we do manage to get these players. But they are as follows. Parejo, uh, Rakitic, Muller, uh, let me consult, Isco, Verratti, and Pjanic. So they're the six that are the most common 86s packed in the midfield. I think you'll all uh, notice that you've seen them pop up a few times when you've had some walkouts. So I'm going to go and try and snipe those players now. And like I say, you'll see on the transfer market afterwards if I have got any. And I'll let you know what they're selling at and what their price was that we got them sniped at. Okay, so we've done the midfielders now. We have picked up a few that are just waiting to sell. So we're going to move on to the forwards. Now the first one I'm going to look at, who I think is probably the most common 85 rated player to pop up, is Gonzalo Higuain. We're just going to go and check and see how much he's worth. So Higuain goes for around about 9,000 coins, just over. So we'll look at 9,300 and uh, there's one there at 9. And one there at 9.5 just gone up. So. He's going to be about 500 coins gone after tax. It looks like we can probably put him up at 9.7 and still get an instant sell. Yeah, so we're going to be looking to get him up at 9.7, but we can actually get him, try and see if we can pick any up at 9,000 coins. Once we put him up at 9,700, obviously it will be 500 coins tax pretty much after, after EA take that away. So we're looking at a 200 coin profit on any 9 grand card. And a little bit more for anything less. Okay, so we picked up a couple of Higuains there. We're going to move on to our next player. Another Argentinian. We're going to go on to Mauro Icardi. Now, I think again, I think his price is around about 9k. We will just have a look. Yeah, so there's one on there in the market at 9. And a few on there at 9,200. We'll just check the extra 100. So we probably will be able to get him sold at 9,100 but we're going to pick him up for 8,400 or less in order to make a profit so we'll go on this card for a little bit and see if we can find ourselves in a cardi okay so after getting kicked off for the umpteenth time i think it's been five or six times we've been kicked off in just an hour and a half you will see we have got the coin balance at 760,000. however obviously as you know i was going on uh mara Ricardi, um which i did get i think one or two let me just have a look we got Oh, just the one. Yeah, just the one there. Uh, around about 8,000. Sold him on for nine. So what we're going to do is we've got to finish off with the 86 forwards because it is an 85 or 86 sniper method. And the first one that we are going to look at who comes up quite often is Immobile. 
Now his price is around about 18 and a half thousand. So let's just pop that in there. So he's actually gone down a little bit. 18 he would definitely sell out. So what we're going to try and do is undercut that to 17. We'll go on this card for a little bit. Uh, then the other one I'm going to go and have a look at is uh, Roberto Firmino, uh, the other 86 rated player. And then after that, we'll get into the draft. Okay, so unfortunately, we didn't get a Firmino or a Immobile come up under those. But we have got the uh, the money we needed to enter the draft, as I said before. Uh, obviously, it's a big thanks to the massive snipe we got on Sula, uh, which was obviously a 12k to sell at 17. So you're talking that's a good four and a bit thousand coins profit. Uh, otherwise, we probably wouldn't quite be at the target we wanted to be at. The only other snipe I did do that was fairly okay was I did get this Higuain for 8,000 coins, which meant that was another 1,000 coin profit. Uh, Mara Ricardio got 8,000 coins again, but he sells at 9, so that wasn't quite so good. It's about 500 coins. But generally, they're right about that mark, 5 to sort of 800, 900 coins. And then next time on the episode that we do next next time around, we will do the 87s to 88s on the next Graph to a Draft episode. But as I say always, without any further delay, let's do the one thing you came here to see, which is the draft. Pretty happy with that as a draft. So I'll just go and quickly show you what I plan to do in-game. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put Varane on in here for Mendy. And then we're going to go ahead and put Humans on in here for David Silva. So this will be our start and line up after the, we do the pause and do the subs in the game. Uh, we've got a prime moments R9, so we're hoping that this is going to see us to a victory. Let's get into the first game. So unfortunately we have uh, come across a very very good skillful player uh, to start off with. Um, he's done a lot of skill moves, a lot of stopping the ball. Uh, he's catching us out very well. And uh, yeah after our corner uh, straight away he's on the counter attack and scored with Garincha. Uh, we were very exposed at the back there following that corner as well. But we're 1-0 down. Let's see how we go. Yeah, this guy is a very, very good player. Um, knows all the right skill moves to send me the wrong way. I don't do skill moves. I'm not interested in doing them. I just like to pass the ball around and do my best to get there. Manager, a ball roll here and there, but that's about it. Uh, yeah, we could see ourselves out in the first round very quickly. Three nil to 30 minutes. I think we're going to quit out of this one. Um, but what I am going to do, rather than uh, quit out of this one and just show you the rubbish packs that we're going to get, um, just because we have come up against such a good player and it is coming towards the end of FIFA 20, I'm going to start another draft up. So you get two drafts for the price of one. Obviously, we have only traded to the uh, 15,000 coins and not 30,000. But I feel like it's a bit of a robbery for me to show you just getting battered from someone who clearly is, is very, very good at the game compared to myself. So with these packs, we'll just go and stick them. They'll sit on the store and we will go and get into another draft. So into another draft. Unfortunately, we've not got some very good formations here. We're going to have to go with the 4 4 one, one. The rest of those were terrible. And again, we've got all players that have better cards, but probably not Coutinho. So we'll go and take Coutinho. Go straight up to the striker. I'm going to take the Future Stars Marlon card because I know that is a very good card. Went to go to right mid, but it chose there instead. Uh, I think for the Dutch links, although De Jong's got a better card as well. I'm going to take this guy from the Eredivisie. You never know. We might get lucky. As we'll go and take... Um, Lucas Moura here because he's yeah Lucas Moura because he's probably going to have the more easier links with Brazilian we're going to need a couple of icons we've got Wijnaldum in there so that helps us out a little bit with chemistry on the Dutch side of things and I think we'll take Scream Firmino to sit in there at centre forward
No one from the Dutch League here. We've got someone from the Australian League, German League 2 and the Italian League 2. We'll go and take the easiest one to link in Yuri Berice. Nothing great there. But we're going to take Ramos for the chemistry again. Nothing really great at the back there. But we'll take Henderson because we know we've got a uh, Premier League right side. <laughs> we've got Van Dyke there so that gives us our centre back strong link uh, in point of fact perfect linked over to um, over to Wijnaldum we'll take Puyol just there for the chemistry but actually I think probably going to be better off in trying to fit him in at left centre back for chemistry eventually Let's go and see what we can get to try and make this team's chemistry a little bit better. We've got a right wing Salah. That does give us a little bit better chemistry because he's strong links over to Wijnaldum. We could do have a Quincy Promise here, really. But we'll take Mbappe. We've got Aaron wan Basaka for right back, so let's take him. I'm going to take Sterling again just in case we get stuck with the chemistry. Going to go and stick Poyol in at that centre back position. It does put him on six chem, but it gives more chem to some of the other players there. Really, I do want to see Quincy Promise as team of the season card, is ideally what I want. As we go and get David De Gea, so we'll pop him in for Hendo. I feel like he's just a little bit better. Likewise, I think we've got Cancheo's a little bit better there as well. And take Quadrado because actually, as a, even though he's a right back as a super sub, he probably would offer us a lot more there. So here we want Quincy Promise. We've got a Nor Norwegian player, but he's not from the right league, unfortunately. Um, I don't think he will give us any more chem. We're going to take him, but I'm pretty sure he won't. And no Quincy Promise, unfortunately. So it looks like we're going to end up looking to change this team around a little bit. As we go and get a silver for striker, which is a nightmare for us. And Di Maria... So this is the best that we can get the team after playing around a little bit with the draft. And Marlon is unfortunately on a lower chemistry. We're hoping for a Dutch manager or an Eredivisie manager. We don't get either. And we don't even get a Premier League manager to boost them. So we'll go and take the Spanish League manager there. Fortunately, it's a 95 chemistry team. 89 rated. It could be that we're unfortunately up against it again on this one. Um, what I'm going to probably do, probably stick Bobby Firmino in at CDM and then put maybe Di Maria um, or maybe move Marlon back into centre forward and put like Di Maria up front because he does look pretty incredible as a card. So we'll get into the game. I'll say you're getting two, two drafts for the price of one in this video anyway. Um, and if it's not fun seeing me getting battered for a second time, then I don't know what is. As we go and have a look at four prime icon moments, a team of the year, Kante, a team of the season, Griezmann, and a team of the season, Godin, and a team of the season, Quadrado. He's got Greenwood, at striker. Yeah, we could be in trouble. Uh, let's see how this guy plays. As we see ourselves 1-0 up and already I'm a lot happier because this guy is nowhere near as good as the first guy uh, committing to his challenges and he hasn't done a single skill move yet so we do find ourselves 1-0 up. Uh, it's just after we've literally just brought the subs on so Mbappe straight away plays his through ball through and I guess that is uh, a goal by Marlon actually. So Marlon from the centre forward position is still quite far ahead there. What can I say about that? I've gone to the bylines to try and stop it from getting there. 
The keeper's dived to try and stop it going across and it hasn't. And then to top it off, the striker's got it tangled in his feet and has ended up walking it in the goal because he hasn't even got a shot away. Um, God, I love FIFA. And there we go, turn inside with Mbappe. He commits his keeper, so all we've really got to do is just step aside and finesse that around him. 2-1. After an unfortunate goal uh, against us. And there we go again, he commits his goalkeeper. We get it out to the wing. Uh, turn him a little bit, chip it back in, and it's a nice header down there. Nice to see him not put a header over the bar for once in a while as Di Maria goes and gets us a nice goal to put us 3-1 up. Okay, so he nearly scores at half time there as he puts it onto the post. Um, for that reason, he's probably going to stay in the game. We have had a little bit more shots and we've had all the shots on target. You see, he hasn't had a single shot on target, yet he scored a goal. Uh, but yeah, we've had uh, five shots on target during that time. Obviously, he walked his goal in uh, somehow. He has been doing a little bit of skill moves, but nothing where I feel like he knows what he's doing. Just kind of doing them for the sake of doing some skill moves. We move on. And there we go. We get our fourth goal. It's been paused. So what I'm hoping is we are getting a rage quit in the first round of our second draft. And we have... The team's not playing too badly, to be fair. Um... Yes, it feels like, I know, obviously, he's a Van Dyke, but it's not a team of the season, Van Dyke. And obviously, as the game has progressed, there are a lot more special cards at forwards. Van Dyke does seem like he is struggling for pace a little bit at the centre-back position there. However, we got through that first round. That's all I wanted to do today, really. I can't have you seeing me get uh, absolutely battered in the first round and get terrible rewards. So we go again into the second round. Now we can get battered as we look at a prime moments Garincha, prime moments Eusebio, prime moments Hadji, two shapeshifters in David Luiz and Marcelo. I mean, Sommer's off chem, uh, Chiellini's off chem and not very good, Umtiti's off chem. Other than that, this looks like a pretty good draft. And there we go, we just uh, had a really unfortunate turn where I'd already committed to the through ball and unfortunately played it out to the wing, but we got it back inside, got the shot away with Salah, and we make it 1-0. Unfortunately, that is partly my fault and partly Puyol's fault of passing the ball, and he's backed off. He hasn't even bothered coming for it. Um... Yeah, I don't really know what's happened there. So we're giving a goal away for free. And there we go, just before half-time, literally on the stroke of the last minute of the injury time, we get another goal to make it 2-1. I feel like it's been a long time coming. Uh, you won't see all these in the highlights. I've got a lot of video to edit here. But I did hit the post once. Okay, so we go into half-time. We are 2-1 up. Uh, yeah, you won't see it in those, uh, but we did actually have a, a lot more chances in there. I did hit the post uh, once and also had a chance where uh, I was uh, in the line of intercepting the pass from the goalie to centre-back in his area and my uh, my striker tripped over uh, Sol Campbell, so I didn't get to the ball. Um, but otherwise, that would have been a nice, easy tap-in. He made a mistake in trying to roll it out to Sol Campbell. We didn't get to capitalise on it, but we are 2-1 up. I don't know what else I could do to stop him from scoring now. I've got inside the passing lanes. I've, I've blocked the ball a couple of times and still it finds its way back to his feet uh, in order to get the tap in there. Really don't feel like we should be losing to this guy. But 
It's uh, it's two two. We're not losing at the moment, but I just feel like the game's against us. Uh, we'll carry on. And there we go. We do get it back. My negativity worked, and we moaned in the three two. I do really like this Marlon Future Stars card. I think he's a very good striker, and he puts it away just inside the post. Three two. And there we go, he makes a massive mistake as we try and spot the runs of him throwing it out this time. We have done so, we've put it into Di Maria, who's just tapped it in for a goal. That might be enough to frustrate him out of this game. But if it isn't, I'm going to take this opportunity to actually take off Bobby Firmino. He's a little bit tired, also he's on a yellow card. I'm going to try this uh, Wolf Ikram uh, card and see what he's like. And wow, what a goal. Uh, I tried to track the run with Van Dijk uh, to get ahead of him there, but uh, Eusebio's got away too quickly and the corner's taken quickly. Nice volley. Makes his way through onto the goal. 4-3. Okay, so we've both had a couple of more chances since that last goal there, um, but unfortunately, neither of us get another goal. I say unfortunately, I only mean for me. So, 4-3, we go into a semi-final. Like I say, the team's not too bad. We like Marlon. He's a good striker. Uh, Di Maria, I haven't really noticed too much, if I'm honest. And Scream Firmino in the middle. Don't really know much about him. I noticed so much the David Luiz that the guy had in that last game. He was intercepting everything. And again, I have talked about this in previous Graft to Draft episodes. And drop a comment in the box below uh, if you have any suggestions for me. But my players just don't seem to intercept the ball. I can stand in between the passing lanes and they still don't seem to pick the ball up. So if you know anything I should do to that um, to try and rectify that. Or if there's just players generally that just have a lot higher interceptions that I should look out for when I'm doing a draft, let me know. Okay, so here we go into the semi-final. We're against a, a fairly okay team. There's nothing particularly special about it. Um, I do like that Jovino card. I have used it before. It's very good dribbling, very good shooting. Um, but everything else seems fairly basic. Sol Campbell and Ferran at the back is a fairly good centre-back pairing, but we've, uh, we've come up against better so far. Let's see if we can get ourselves into a final. And we straight away, before we even get the subs on the pitch, go 1-0 up. Bobby Firmino made a lovely run through the middle. Marlins just struck it forward with a little through ball. And it's lovely. Nicely low driven into the far corner. We'll go and make our substitutions. Okay, so we see ourselves in a half time with 1 0. Um, generally, I think this guy is probably a little bit of a better player than us, but I am defending out of my life. Um, it does obviously look like we've had more shots than Target, but generally, he has created better chances. He's got to the byline really well. It's just in that really last moment, we've managed to intercept the ball and get away. We've not had any other clear cut chances. There was one little scramble where we had about two or three shots in a row. Uh, Soul Clamble, I think, personally blocked every single one of them. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty tight game. Uh, I'll be very surprised if we don't concede at all. Um, but yeah, hopefully if we do get another goal, maybe we can encourage him to get out of the game and see ourselves into a final. Yeah, unfortunately it was a long time coming. Uh, he has finally got his goal. Unfortunately, the really annoying thing is there is we've had a really, really good chance at the other end just before this, um, where actually we probably should have put it away. But unfortunately, instead of when, although this is another frustrating thing about the game, and I'm sure you guys will know it as well, when you pass sideways into the box to a player, they continue their run and the ball goes behind them. And it happened to Firmino. Firmino was in the middle of the box. Uh, all he had to do was just tap it in. Unfortunately, he's facing the wrong way. And so he takes a turn and uh, and hits a really tame shot when really it could have been a lot more powerful and probably a better chance at scoring. Um, so yeah, so we would have been 2 0 up instead of 1 uh, all. Oh, and again, um, 
really good opportunity at the other end for us. Marlon uh, just on the edge of the box. Uh, I don't know if he's left footed because he hit it with his right foot and it went screaming wide. Um, it was nowhere near. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately then it's from that counter attack that they've then gone and scored. That's a massive shame there. I feel like we've actually been the better player during that game uh, for the amount of defending we've done and also the two chances that we've had that should have been goals. Literally, he's then gone on the counter-attack and scored. Uh, so it's a shame to come away with a 2-1 loss there in the semi-final. Uh, feel like it was undeserved. But you got two drafts for the price of one. At least we've got double the rewards, even if all the rewards are generally terrible. You never know. We may pick up a team of the season. There are some uh, rest of the world team of the seasons in packs now so you can pick up a team of season from pretty much any pack I think at the moment as we go and open the silver pack we'll see if we've got anything decent in there to sell on so nothing from any of the main leagues by the looks of it we'll go and open our first gold pack that is no board in that one surprised to get a rare if I'm honest Anything from main leagues we will sell. There's nothing really in there. I know that one at the end is Bundesliga, but when I say main leagues, I'm definitely talking sort of higher rated than a 77 player like that. They don't tend to go for more than 500 or so coins. Nothing in the third gold pack. Jumbo premium gold pack. We've got something in this one. It's a team of the season. Is that Handanovic? No, or Black. We've got an ultimate team of the season. Well, that's unbelievable. I know he's not worth a lot of money, but to get that in a Jumbo Premium Gold Pack, it is paid for both the drafts that we did do. That's an incredible. Uh, massive 96 team of the season pull in there. And we get a board in there as well. That's a great pack in a Jumbo Premium Gold Pack. All Black is a team of the season card there. I'm just going to go and have a look on Footbin, see what he goes up as. We'll get him listed on the market. Our black team of the season is going for 79,000 coins. That's a really good pull for us to be able to get that. We'll list him up. We'll look at Kadira. Must be going for a little bit as well. Around about five and a bit. Let's put him up for five and a half and start him lower, see if he sells. De Jong will go, we'll just list him normally. This guy will probably go. So will Mario Gaspar. So will Gator. So will Cavaselli. So will Fedal. A lot of good players in here we're selling. And we've got some squad fitnesses here as well. This is a really good Jumbo Premium Gold Pack as well. Don't know whether the striker to centre forward card is worth much. No, 450 coins I was there. Uh, we'll put that up. We'll give someone a bargain at 250. And our jib we've got on the end is just a stadium. So that's a massive one for us to be able to get that team of the season, ultimate team of the season, all black. As we open our premium gold players pack, and we don't get a board in that one. Unbelievable, really. So we did go ahead and do that second draft just because we played such a good person at the first draft that we got absolutely smashed to pieces. We then go and uh, get ourselves a team of the season from finishing in the semi-final uh, of that draft, which is a pretty amazing feat, to be fair. 79,000 coins in the bank. It more than pays for both of those drafts. Like I say, you've had an 85 to 86 uh, sniping filters and trading filters uh, for this one. On the next graph to a draft, I will do the 87s to 88s so that you can just get a general feel for sort of how easy they are to snipe, how often they come up. It will probably again always be around about this time of day, so unfortunately the market isn't as active as it would be in the evening. But unfortunately, I do save my evenings to spend time with my wife. Um, it's just because obviously FIFA and, and YouTube, etc., is just a hobby at the moment. But the way that will change is if I do get many more subscribers. So what I do need you guys to do is drop a like, drop a comment and share this channel so that we can get more subscribers. That way I can get some collabs with some other YouTubers, do some videos at some more prime times and we can bring you some better content. But thank you for tuning into this Graft to a Draft episode. I've been B-Rad. Thank you.